Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah. Thanks for joining me today for what I'm going to call adventures in tarot deck shopping. And today's adventure takes us to the Japan auction sites. Um, now if you're new here um, or if you're new uh, to the Japanese um, kind of tarot shopping and culture, um, I would say that I'm not an expert by any means. I'm trying to learn more about it. But it's an area of interest to me um, from a historic perspective because I feel like it's not well known in this country that Stuart Kaplan was heavily involved in, um, sorry, Stuart Kaplan, the founder of um, US Games, which um, had the first release of the RWS deck here in the US um, and has been a powerhouse of tarot publishing ever since he founded the, the company um, in the early 70s. So um, he was also heavily influenced in um, tarot culture and, uh, you know, I don't know if he helped promote it there in, in Japan or if he just sort of rode a wave that was naturally happening um, culturally. Uh, Japanese people got very interested in tarot and there's still a huge um, tarot market there today. So a lot of the cornerstone decks um, that Stuart Kaplan produced the uh, or had reprinted um, the one JJ Swiss, the Tarot Classic, the RWS um, were all uh, cross marketed there, um, and even more decks, even more as I look into him. Um, so this kind of took me down a rabbit hole recently. I did go on a bit of a spree <laughs> um, shopping there uh, at Japan auction sites, but. Um, I had some I had some successes and I had some mishaps and some kind of question marks and I thought it would just be fun to kind of look at those stories today. Um, I'm still waiting on some resource material to really dive into the content of the Japanese decks that I purchased and to, to hopefully learn more about them. Um, but today I just kind of wanted to talk about the the auction shopping process and share some some fun things with you. So um, Japanese auction sites, um, well let me back up and just say that uh, at least up to up to now, um, which is October of 2021, um, it's been unlikely that you've been able to find much, if at all, in terms of tarot decks on sites like eBay. And there are some restrictions. I'm not entirely clear on the laws because I do occasionally see decks on eBay um, from Japan, but not very many. So there are other sites that are popular there, including Yahoo Japan Auctions, um, and a few others, and there are buying services that you have to go through in order to make purchases there if you don't have a Japanese address. Um, and what the buying service does is it forwards your bid, it places the bid for you, um, or it makes the purchase if you're doing a, a direct buy kind of a situation, makes the purchase for you, uh, brings that item into the warehouse. Um, you can then pay for extra services like checking the packages or taking photos of the items and sending them to you. And then it can consolidate multiple packages into a single box and send those on to you, um, to your non-Japan address. Um, and they do work with many uh, com countries uh, across the world, not just the US, but um, Canada and parts of Europe as well. Um, as the kind of recent popularity of tarot has, has really surged, I would say starting in maybe 2019, 2020, um, and it's gone up. Um, more and more people have discovered the Japanese auction sites, uh, including people who sort of seem to flip decks and sell them on for profit on sites like eBay to uh, Westerners who aren't willing to go through these extra steps to, to get on to the Japanese auction sites. So just know that like, Whereas I think a year and a half ago, you could have gotten some real steals. It's getting harder and harder to, to find those deals. Um, especially on some of the popular decks that are, or decks that have kind of been rediscovered by uh, Western collectors. Um, but you can still find interesting things there. You can find stuff that you can't find as readily on like um, eBay US, eBay Canada, eBay UK. Um, and sometimes you can get good deals if you're if you're very patient and if you go on like and check every single day. Um, I will say that I spent hours and hours uh, on the site for probably six weeks over the summer. 
and it can be a super time consuming um, hobby or pastime. It can really eat up your time. Um, so, and it can kind of, I don't know, feed into a certain compulsive purchasing um, thing. So those are the, those are the downsides and the caveats. I just want to warn people that it's not all like fun and games. It's also like spending lots of money and getting stressed out and whatever. But um, overall, I did have fun and I found some really cool stuff and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Um, like I said, in this video, I'm not going to go over um, the main decks that I purchased, but I had some interesting finds and so I wanted to share those with you. Um, so the first one, um, I think, is going to be kind of this story. I found a listing um, for two decks, and sometimes you have to buy a lot or a group of decks um, in order to get one thing that you're really interested in. Um, and so the listing that I saw had this box <laughs> and this deck. Um, now, if you are familiar with Japanese tarot, you will um, get excited about this box. This is uh, a tarot. It's one of the first to be published in Japan. It's a recolored version, a redrawn and recolored version of the RWS. It's, it's known as the JK Weight. Um, Alexandria Jupiter King was responsible for um, kind of creating this deck and having it redrawn there. And so I was excited, even though this didn't come, it only came with the cards. Um, it didn't come with the book or anything like that. Um, the price on this was amazing. Um, it was listed for $10 for the two decks and I ended up getting it for 20. Um, so plus fees and shipping and all that. So the price goes up a little bit, but yeah, that was a, a crazy steal. Um, and I really lucked out just kind of noticing this, this listing. It also had some keywords in it. I think one was junk. Um, and another one was like bad condition and stuff, but fortunately the person had put in enough images that I felt confident uh, bidding at such a low price. Anyway, total lucky score, but what I, you know, I didn't even pay attention or didn't even care that this deck was also included. Um, but now I'm kind of curious, now that I've unpacked it, um, I knew it looked like the Visconti Sforza, which I have a reproduction copy of. So this is one of the first tarot decks ever um, created. And it was a handmade deck um, painted in Italy with gold and silver leaf. It was for the Sforza family who were the rulers or governors um, in this region of Italy back in the mid 1400s. Um, I think his, the, the title we know him as is like the Duke of Milan. So a Duke being like a, a prince essentially, um, of a, of a city state. Um, but this deck, as you can see, is, is huge. Um, I just showed you. Yeah. So this is like regular tarot size. And then this is the, the size, but this is the size the cards would have been originally. Though there have been several, uh, releases of like this facsimile, huge size, but I'm not sure exactly which one this is. You can see, um, maybe not on this camera, but you can kind of see that there's like a gray uh, border on each card. And I can see by looking at it that this is like a photo of the original cards. Um, what you can tell here is that these haven't been retouched. So there's paint and leaf is like flaking off and peeling in places. There's tears, uh, there's creases, there's all kinds of of things. Um, the backs are just a solid red. And I feel like this is maybe um, one that Lascarveo did as like a special release or something, but this didn't come with a box. Um, it did come with a booklet uh, in Japanese, so that's interesting. Um, here is the booklet. You can see it's got Japanese writing at the top. And um, what's interesting to me is it has some images from other tarots in it. So this would be like a Bolognese, um, a couple of examples from Bolognese tarot, but just a little bit later in book from Bologna. And then it has in the back, it mentions Grimaud, A.G. Mueller, Piatnik, and Mondi Mondiano, which are all famous printing houses. 
of tarot. I know that's out of focus, but that's where that comes in. And then there's a few images from other tarot. So we've got a, a Conver lookalike. We have, or that's the Grimaud, which is a Conver copy. Um, and then we have, what is this? This is uh, one deck I don't, that's a Tarot deck. I don't know what that is. Uh, this is the Tarot Classic. Um, so it looks more to me like this would have been a Stuart Kaplan kind of production, um, but maybe it's Les Garabeo. The only other clue I have about this deck is that um, it, the the Scanti Sforza, the originals, did not include a tower or a devil card. And so every version of this that gets released, the artist has to kind of do their own interpretation. So everyone is a little different. Here's the Los Garabeo one in the, um, the small, completely repainted version that I have. And then here's this one. So you can see they're very different. Um, and then here's the devil, which is another card that's been kind of reinvented based on period artwork and what they think that might have looked like. But again, they're quite different. Um, so yeah, if you know which version of this deck this is, like who, who the modern producer is, um, please let me know in the comments. I will also say that the cardstock is, you know, it feels nice, but it's incredibly thin. Um, yeah, this is like, uh, what, like heavy, um, cardstock that you would use to like print invitations or something. It's very, very thin and flimsy. So, and it does have a shiny, a slightly shiny gloss finish varnish on the front and then a matte on the back. So anyway, if you know what this is, um, let me know. I don't know if I'll keep this or not. I, I definitely wouldn't be able to work with it or read with it. It's just way too huge. Um, and I don't like how, how messy, uh, ooh, almost dropped those cards all over the place. I don't like how messy the cards are. Um, and you know, it's hard to tell who's who. I mean, that's the Empress, but then, um, you know, is that the King of what? Is that the Emperor? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, you have to really look closely to see that he's got a cup in his hand because the cup blends in with the background so much. So I prefer, when I'm working with this deck, I prefer to work with this one, even though it may not be more um, as historically accurate, it's just a lot easier to read the images. So this one's maybe, maybe up for grabs, who knows? Um, but yeah, I just want to know what it is first, so let me know. All right, so that was one um, that was an interesting thing. Um, another one that kind of caught my eye, and I didn't know what to expect from it. Um, I wasn't expecting much. Um, there is or, is or has been a company called Felissimo. They seem to publish or republish um, a number of different kinds of decks. And um, they also have this um, correspondence course it's called Apprentice Witches Tarot Lesson. Um, and it's kind of funny because this, this part is all in, um, in English, but then these are clearly for the Japanese market because they're little, they're little workbooks. So this is the workbook where you would like fill out your answers or there's graph paper here. So I guess you could draw, you know, draw the cards for yourself, um, sketch them out to get to know them better. And then there's the lessons in here, you know, how to shuffle, how to draw, how to, how to uh, identify different symbols. Here it looks like the cards are like having a little conversation. So they're talking about, you know, narrative and storytelling and all that stuff. Um, and I saw this all over uh, the auction sites and it did pique my curiosity. So this is just lesson one. Um, and I think it's actually kind of a genius money grab here. The way they do this is they have six lessons. So they break the deck down into um, like six groups of cards and they send you one a month over six months. And so the idea is you have this like paced out thing. So I ended up with lesson one, which is the cup suit. Um, and you can see it's just a redrawing. And if you think that that's like a crummy image, let me tell you, it's not just my computer. It is a crummy image. Um, these are so poorly redrawn. It's like, 
you know, it's like a talented uh, six-year-old um, got hold of a tarot deck and sort of traced and redrew it. Um, the line work is terrible. The images are, the, the colors are very blocky. Um, it's really bad. But I was just curious about, uh, about this. I don't know if you can see, but that person has a super goofy look on their face. They actually look drunk there. <laughs> the Nine of Cups. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know. I, it scratched my itch. Um, it was probably a waste of money, but um, it wasn't a ton of money. So yeah, there you go. Apprentice Witches Tarot Lesson by Felissimo. Probably something you can skip if you come across it. Um, and I did see people selling like the whole package for anywhere from... I guess because they'd, they'd invested in it over a number of months, right? And you have to pay like the monthly subscription fee plus shipping. So it probably adds up. Um, but, you know, I saw people asking anywhere from 50 to to $100 for a complete set. And I'm like, no, the cardstock is awful. It's got that very uh, cheap kind of waxy coating on it. Very plasticky, but very cheap. Not the, not the like nice um, plasticky thing. Anyway. Do not recommend, but, you know, lesson learned. Um, anyway, that's kind of funny. Okay, moving on. Talking about Stuart Kaplan some more. Um, actually, he's involved in both of these. Um, but let's talk about the Angel Tarot. So I've, I've done a video on the Angel Tarot. Um, this is a deck that uh, Stuart Kaplan was involved in helping to bring about. Um, I'm not sure how closely... He was involved in the production, although um, this is based, I think, on um, either the Burdell or the Gasman. So um, it's definitely based on some kind of a Swiss um, Swiss TDM kind of style, um, and I really like it. It's got the like playing card kind of pips or, or Marseille playing card mashup. So you have here, you have swords and you have the spades, but you have a different arrangement than the traditional um, pattern. So, um, you know, that just makes it like a nice fun difference to read with rather than having this exact same pattern on, on all your pip cards. Um, so because I'm such a fan of this, I saw something that said, um, Sony cards, Sony as in the, the I know them mostly as a music um, equipment brand, um, but then it had this image and it looked like the Angel Tarot. So let's open this together because I haven't actually looked at it. Um, so it's just this plain black box. It's not very thick, so I'm guessing it's just 22 cards. And um, since my camera refuses to focus, it says members of uh, four special selected members of Sony card and the emblem in the middle is like a kind of an art deco style it's a guy playing a saxophone and these little musical notes are kind of coming out which um, I guess was a symbol that that Sony used so inside we have the same booklet um, as comes with this pack booklet <laughs> and sure enough um, the same deck but it says Sony card on the back this says Sony card here and it's that same emblem so I guess this was some kind of marketing campaign and we do see this um, you know in in the US and in the UK that people used uh, tarot for marketing like I've got the I've got the lovers card from um, the Frank Albano deck um, that was used to advertise and promote the musical hair um, there's things like the line strider tarot that were used to promote um, printing uh, and lithography um, specialists who could do spe specialty printing for you so there's this long history of like tarot and advertising um, being being sympathetic bedfellows, which is very interesting to me too. It's like why why tarot? You know, um, I guess sort of in the same way that playing cards are. You know, you get promotional playing card packs with like your company logo on them or something like that. But especially these days, I think tarot is more specialized, 
and it's more about like you know the kind of like soul searching or introspection or self development or or even fortune telling um so it's just funny that it's it's made its way into advertising in so many ways so this is cool this is like a genuine uh collector's item this angel tarot um done for i guess sony music um so i'll have to i'll have to see if i can find any other information about why or how this came about but i'm guessing it was just a promotional thing um members of sony card so that's another clue this, i guess this was a special you know membership that you could get maybe maybe subscription you could get music by mail or something um i don't know so but that's kind of cool especially because i'm such a fan of the other deck um so put that aside i did get this random booklet with one of the other decks uh that came and it's again kind of an instruction booklet slash yeah like here's how to shuffle here's how to uh here's some different spreads there it is. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. And then the last uh, anecdote I have um, is around this one. So this is the Spanish Tarot. Um, it is uh, produced by Fournier. But um, I know that Stuart Kaplan was also involved in an early uh, production of this. Um, I technically own another copy of, of this deck, but um, I don't have it with me. And the story on that one is that it was going for um, kind of crazy prices during the, the peak uh, eBay caro fever of, let's say, late 2020, early 2021. Um, but I managed to find a copy for, you know, a fairly reasonable price for a vintage deck around $30 US. Um, but the, the seller wanted a crazy amount of money to ship it over here, overseas. So I have several friends in the UK. I contacted one of them. I said, Hey, I'm bidding on this auction. Um, it's for a very small item, a pack of cards. Can I have it sent to your address? And you know, I'll come get it later. I was like, sure, no problem. Um, so I did that. And of course, um, as the, uh, public health crisis, um, with, the, uh, COVID has dragged on, um, and this is very much a first world problem, so please don't feel sorry for me, but uh, we haven't been able to take our vacation to the UK as planned, and so um, that deck is still in the UK. So I will get it eventually. I'm sure my friends would just send it to me if I asked them to, um, but I don't mind it. I don't need it. I have other tarot decks. Um, so anyway, I was on the online auctions, and I was just about to kind of cut myself off and say, okay, I need to like wrap up and like have them ship me my stuff and stop spending money. Um, when I found this, uh, come up and I was like, oh, it's only $5. They've listed this deck and it's only $5. I'm definitely going to bid on it. Well, I bid on it. I won the auction, I think for $5. Um, you know, again, plus fees and shipping, but still very low price. Um, yeah, it arrived. Uh, I was excited. The box looked like it was in great shape, like no dings, no tears. It's got one sticker over here, but um, uh, that's okay. You know, otherwise in, in pretty good shape. And I open it up and it's got all the paperwork in it and the different languages. Very cool, 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 cool. And then I tip out the cards and I'm like, oh shit. I don't know if you can see that, but these are sealed um these are sealed in the shrink wrap and i don't know if i want to open them <laughs> um because i'm sure to to somebody out there it would be valuable to be able to either have this and keep it sealed as like a collector's item or to be the first person to like crack it open and use it and i'm not really that kind of collector um, the fact that I got this for not very much money makes me kind of just want to open it and use it, get over myself. Um, but part of me sees that, you know, there could be some value in this down the road. And so I'm just not sure if I'm going to be the one to unwrap these. Um, you can see that the color is, is still very excellent, you know, very saturated and vibrant. 
Um, and this is a cool deck. Um, Justin Michael mentioned this one on his channel, and I'll try to find that video and link it. Um, but it's not um, your your typical like Mar Marseille reproduction. It's another deck in the in the museum uh, in in Fournier in Spain, and um, it's based on a deck from 1731. Um, but I don't think there's any other decks on the market that kind of reproduce that particular one. So it's it's unique um, to kind of Spanish tarot of that era, and it's it's the only modern reproduction of that deck. Um, so I, I definitely wanted to have it in my collection. It's also got beautiful colors. It's got like lilac and lime green um, and just other colors that you don't see in those red, blue, and yellow primary color decks um, of the same um, kind of time frame. So I think it's a great, you can still get this brand new, by the way, from Fournier in Spain. Um, they're still making tarot decks, but the colors are a little bit uh, more towards the orange side. They're a little bit more saturated. So, you know, collectors are like, oh, you got to get, you got to get the vintage one. Anyway, that's why I ended up with the vintage one off eBay, which again, is in the UK. And that's why I jumped at the chance to get this one for $5. But now it's like, what do I do? Do I open it? Would you open it? I don't know. Maybe I'm just I'm making a mountain out of a molehill here. Um, but yeah, just another funny thing because my, my initial reaction was like, oh man, it's sealed. And I know some people would be t like thrilled, like, yay, it's sealed, it's brand new, nobody's touched it, you know, nobody's got their germs all over it. But um, I'm kind of like, I don't know. It's It seems like a lot of responsibility somehow. Um, anyway, so that's... That's my kind of hits and misses with um, Japanese tarot auction shopping. And I will be back as soon as I can with more in-depth Japanese tarot information for you. Uh, until then, I hope you're all well and happy and safe and enjoying your fall and all of your Halloween preparations. Uh, and take care. Be